Shalom, all praise the Yahweh, Bashem El Shah. Never lying to the Apostle GMS. I'm the Wa'ala coming next to the video. And um, this video, I'm not sure what I'm going to title the video, but I was just saying to myself earlier today and throughout this week, most I gotta hurry up and bring this fucking society down, man. I'm tired of this fucking shit. You know? Walking for these fucking devils, these crackers, these Edomites, having to wake up in the morning. You know, you can never do what you want to do. You know? You gotta get up and you gotta work for these damn devils, man. But it was our own sins that led us unto this point. Now let's get to the scriptures. Right? So we can go from the beginning of when that, that, that took place, us having to work. This is Genesis 3 and 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten the tree of which I commanded, which I and has eaten the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat it, eat of it, thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shall thou eat of all thou shalt eat of it in all the days of thy life. So because Adam had hearkened unto the voice of his wife and ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is the tree that the Lord commanded not to eat from, where the tree of knowledge of good and evil was not an actual tree with fruit on it. That represented the knowledge of the other nation because other nations were in, were in existence during the time of Adam and Eve. But everybody was known as Adam because Adam goes back to the Hebrew word Adama, which means of the ground. And all the people came of the ground, therefore they were all called Adam. That's why when you go to Genesis 5 and 1, it tells you what male and female created he them and called their name Adam. There is plural, meaning more than person was called Adam. But male and female, he called them Adam. But, we, but wait a minute, you had a woman named Eve. So why would she be called Adam? Because Adam means of the ground. They were, they were what you would call Adamites. <clears throat> thou shalt not eat of it. Curse the ground for thy sake, and in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So the ground was cursed. Because before what happened is we didn't have to till the till the earth. We didn't have to um water our plants or things of that nature. A do. Or like a mist would come up from under the earth and they would water the plants for us. It hadn't even rained up until the time of Noah. So during this time when Adam was living in the Garden of Eden, which Eden goes back to the Hebrew word Adam, meaning paradise, Adam didn't have to do any work. He didn't have to till the ground or anything. Everything grew up on his own. Everything grew up based upon the Most High's volition, which means wishes. In other words, the Most High said it so that you wouldn't have to work, but the crops still grow, and that's the way it was in paradise. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the, of the field. In the sweat of thy face shall it eat bread. That's the point I wanted to get to. Seeing said, thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. Because before this time came, before Adam had sinned, death had not yet come into the world. So we didn't have to eat to live. You didn't have to do that. You'd have to eat the herbs. You gotta eat the herbs of the ground and live. Why? Because you get, you'll get sick. So you gotta eat herbs. But up but prior to this point, that wasn't necessary. The point of that is, the Most High told Adam not to eat the tree, not to get the evil for the day that thou eatest the rough, thou shalt die. Now, a day to the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. In other words, as an Adam didn't live that whole day, that day Adam did die. He lived at 800 and something years old. He died within that day. He didn't go beyond that time period. He didn't live a thousand years. Which he would have been immortal anyway, but that's just to reference how a day to the Lord is a thousand years. Because some say, oh, that's a, that's a contradiction. The scripture says Adam was going to die that day, but he lived at 800 and something years old. Yeah, he died during the day till he so it says um, the day he ate thereof, he was going to die. Well, a day to the Lord is a thousand years. So when they say, oh, well, wait, wait a minute, Adam lived to be 800 and something years old. How did he die that day? The day he, or the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because he did he didn't he did, did die that day. He died a day concerning uh, according to the Lord time, which is a thousand years. Okay, and we know, but soon in the book of Romans six and twenty three, the wages of sin is death. So prior to Adam to Adam sinning, he didn't have to pay the wage of sin, which was death, because there was no sin. So death would not ever come to him. Just like in the kingdom of heaven, we aren't going to sin. Therefore, we're never going to die. We're going to be immortal. Verse 19, In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. So in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread. I mean, what? We got to work. We got to work. We got to sweat. In order for us to have bread. In order for us to eat. 
and all of us to live to sustain ourselves. In other words, blood, not blood, um, bread represents like your sustenance. Blood represents, oh, should I say blood? Well, not, I said blood. Bread represents like your, your, um, your sustenance, that which sustains you. Because when you get money, what do you do? You get something to eat. Because you got to eat in order for you to survive. That's why people get money and say, man, I'm out here trying to eat, man. I'm just trying to eat. You get money, you say, yeah, man, he, he, he eating good. That's what you say. And the sweat of thy face shall they eat bread. Meaning you have to work. We're going to sweat and labor for, for food, for our substance, for, for what it was that we needed to survive. To that return to the ground until we die. For out of it, it was, that was taken. Because we came out of this to the ground. For thus thou art, and thus shalt thou return. Okay, so we came out of this to the ground. We're going to return to the dust of the ground. And we're just going to have to work to survive for the rest of our lives. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 12. It says, um, the sleep of a, of a laboring man is sweet. Right, a laboring man, a man that's worked, his sleep is sweet unto him. Because you finally get a rest, whether you eat little or much. Whether you're working a lot or working a little. Whether you're gaining a lot of, of um, a lot of um, income or little, it's still your sleep is still sweet because that's your rest. But the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep, right? But the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep because the rich want to keep making money. You're working for the rich, you're working for the person that's above you, the person that owns that company. They won't allow you to sleep. You're working from seven to to three. You're supposed to be to work tomorrow at seven o'clock in the morning. To work another seven, three, eight, out seven. To three, which is eight hours, but then when you get home at four thirty, the boss calls and tell you need you to come in. You want to know if you can come in at twelve midnight. What do they mean coming twelve midnight? That's what they'll do. Or we need you overtime, and then if you don't want to take overtime, they get pissed off at you. Like overtime is mandatory. But the abundance of the rich will not suffer in the state. No matter how much ahead, no matter how much ahead your law is schedule, the rich are gonna still want you to work anyway. Think about it. 40 hour work week, 8 hours a day, 5 days a week. Guess what? No matter how much, um, no matter how much work that y'all put, that you wouldn't, that you put in, <clears throat> no matter how far ahead the company is to schedule, they're still not going to lessen your time. They're still not going to lessen your time. They're going to still want you to work harder and harder. They're still going to lessen the amount of time they need you to work with daily. They're still going to lessen the amount of time they need you to work weekly. They're still going to want you to work, even though they're ahead of schedule. Notice the work rate still don't decrease. The work rate, even if the work rate does decrease, because most of the, everything is done, you're still working eight hours a day. They're gonna still find something for you to do, because they don't want you to rest. This is a website called Art in the Bible, but this is the apocryphal. This is um, Baruch chapter three, verse eight. Behold, you are yet this day in our captivity. Oh, we are yet this day in our captivity. We're in our captivity. We're the Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. Based upon your father's line, we're in captivity in the Esau, the so-called white man, the white race, the Edomites, the nation of Edom, where thou scattered us for reproach and a curse. We scattered amongst the nations for reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our power. So we're subject to payments. We gotta pay rent, we gotta pay bills, mortgage, car insurance, transportation, food, clothes. Hell, you gotta pay if you gotta go to the doctor. You gotta go to the dentist, if you gotta go to the hospital, see the doctor, you gotta pay. We are subject to payments, man. According to all the iniquities of our father, because it was our fathers that sinned that led us into the position that we're in today. Which departed from the Lord our power. Right, our fathers departed from the Lord our power and started worshiping other gods. So eventually this is one of our punishments. And we'll go to one of the children right now. I'm gonna end up with this last scripture. This is Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 44. These are all the curses that befell the children of Israel. It says, Deuteronomy 28, 43. It says, The strength that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. So the strength that is amongst us is going to come up above us, and we're going to go to the bottom. Now, Native Americans, Gad, the tribe of Gad, and the tribe of Reuben, Gad, which is North American Indian, Reuben, which is Seminole Indian, they were dwelling in this land in America before Esau and the rest of the nations came. So they're strangers unto, unto the nation of Israel, unto us, because Israel was still here. Okay, and, and it's land in America. And they got above us very high, and we came down very low. Why? Because Esau is the one that controls everything. Don't you know the media is owned by six six corporations? Viacom, Comcast, News Corp, Time Warner, CBS, and Disney. They own everything, man. They own 90, about 90 plus percent of all American media. 
magazines, radios, television networks, newspapers, you name it. They own everything. They come into your neighborhoods, open sub. You got, you got East Indies working in Subway in the ghetto. You know, East Indies working in Dunkin' Donuts in the ghetto. Chinese opening Chinese restaurants. Japanese opening Japanese restaurants. Chinese opening up liquor stores. Koreans opening up food stands. East Indies opening up 99 cent stores. These fucking hammers, these so-called Africans in crowd fried chicken spots, mama fried chicken. You don't call your mother mama. You call our mother mama. Jake, Israel. And they above us very high, we come down very low. And what happens? Our people get their money to them. Verse 44. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. Right? Esau lends to us, we don't lend to him. Because we don't have no resources to lend to Esau. He has resources to lend to us. He, sh he shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Right? Esau's going to be the head, and we're going to be the tail. <clears throat> but not just Esau, the rest of the other nations. They're going to be the head, and we're going to be the tail. They're going to lend to us, and we ain't going to lend to them. <clears throat> they're the ones that own, they the ones that own these factories that make the clothes. <clears throat> the cars that we drive, they know Jake own cars. They own by America. Ford and so forth. You got them Japanese with their cars, got the Germans with their cars. We don't own them, they lend to us, we don't lend to them. He shall be the head and thou shall be the tail. Right, they're the head and we're the tail. We're at the bottom and they're at the top. You know? So then I'm going to close up and learn something. I'm going to say Shalom.